The nominees for Canada's worst handyman have spent the last 10 days here at our rehabilitation center, where we've taught them all we can about demolition. Oh my God, you're scaring me. Carpentry, electrical work, glass work, plumbing, plastering, wallpapering, floor tiling, and basic tool use. That's a hacksaw for cutting metal, hey? Oh, well, yeah, sure it is, Andrew. Today's final exam will reveal which of them really is Canada's worst handyman. When the country's worst amateur renovators showed up here at the Handyman Rehabilitation Center six episodes ago, they were all totally clueless when it came to the basic art of home renovation. So, we gave them classroom lessons, we gave them hands-on tutorials, and we had each of them completely overhaul a one-bedroom apartment in this building. Now, most of them are still clueless. The country's worst renovators have no idea that today, in our final episode, they are about to completely overhaul this destroyed one-bedroom apartment as a team in a 10-hour shift. When they're done, one of them will get nailed with the embarrassing title of Canada's Worst Handyman. I'm not Canada's Worst Handyman. I am not Canada's Worst Handyman. If I'm labeled, you know, Worst Handyman, it's going to be quite embarrassing. There's no way I could be the absolute worst. It's not going to be me. Merle was nominated as the nation's worst renovator by his wife, Shelley. Merle and planning don't even go in the same sentence. While in rehab, Merle committed multiple atrocities with duct tape. He made more patches than plans, and while cutting corners, he cut himself. Ouch. <gasps> no, that's a big cut. It's that's a big cut. I accidentally cut my finger, went to the hospital, got five stitches. For Merle to not be named Canada's worst handyman today, he'll have to concentrate on safety. I'm taking things slow today. Be more safe. Barry from Quadra Island, BC, was nominated as Canada's worst handyman by his nervous friend, Scott. <laughs> Barry came to rehab willingly because he knows if he continues renovating the way he's been renovating, he'll eventually end up in hospital. Most of the time, nothing turns out right, and I hurt myself. For Barry not to be named Canada's worst handyman, he'll have to do things by the book. Well, I don't remember all the stuff he told us about the because I wasn't listening. Keith was nominated as Canada's worst handyman by his friend David. I don't know what tools are. Like, I don't know what these things do. While in rehab, Keith learned how to use power tools. Holy oh, that's cool. And he learned how to use hand tools. Ow, ow. But he didn't learn how to focus. You think Keith is paying attention, but then it's just no. I can hear you, but I don't listen. For Keith to not be named the worst, he's going to have to finish what he starts. Jeannie was nominated by her friend, Lawrence. The Valley Instructions. Jeannie has a very difficult time understanding directions. Because of that, she rarely gets projects finished. I may have it by the end of the week. Why do they make it so complicated? For Jeannie not to be named Canada's worst handyman, she'll have to follow instructions. And finally, Daryl was nominated as Canada's worst by his wife, Sarah. I would just like to do a little bit more than change a light bulb. At the rehab center, this bodyguard repeatedly melted down due to poor planning. It was fine for a minute. He had to repeat several challenges, and he had a hard time containing his aggression. Have you got a spirit level? I just want to grab that scraggly pile of hair and just boom, boom, boom. Stop it. If Daryl wants to avoid being named Canada's worst handyman, he's going to have to keep his emotions in check. To observe every bad move the handymen make, Greg House and Robin Lockhart, our two opinionated experts, will be watching from the production team's mission control center. At the end of this episode, we will inspect whatever work the nominees get done. Then, we will name the most deserving contender Canada's Worst Handyman. Which one of them is Canada's Worst Handyman? Oh, goodness. At the end of our previous episodes, the person named the worst had to hang their head in shame. Barry, Keith, 
Jeannie, Keith again, and Merle all nailed their images to the wall. Boy, oh, don't hit your finger. You can throw away everything that's happened so far. Canada's worst handyman will be totally judged on this final exam. So, do you want to see the final exam? Yes. Yeah. Let's go. The nominees go to the exam room with no idea of what's in store. During their stay in rehab, these people each tackled 19 individual challenges that for the most part, they'd never done before. Now, we're going to make you do it all over again. You're going to completely dress this apartment from top to bottom in one day. Working together is going to be crucial on this day. Here's what you're going to do. In the bathroom, there's a wall that needs to be tiled. And this sink has to be replaced and replumbed. Jeannie thinks that's unfair because she only learned how to replace a kitchen sink. This is the kitchen sink, only it's in the bathroom. It's the exact same principle. Okay. In the kitchen, the team has to take these cupboards down and put up new ones. They have to tile the floor and they have to install a window of glass blocks. In the bedroom, they need to screw gyp rock onto the strapped ceiling and they'll have to plaster the gaps. How long has your daughter's room had drywall up but no plaster? Nine years. This is something you should get on top of, Merle. You want to learn this one? This stuff will accept plaster and then be able to be sanded, not like duct tape. Once they clean up the plaster, they'll have to wallpaper one wall before moving on to the living room, where they must make a stand for this television using pine boards. They also have to lay a hardwood floor using adhesive, and they need to check their projects off this list as they go. To do this task, you have 10 hours. The main object is to spruce up this room. The main object, Merle, is to not be Canada's worst handyman. Yeah. Don't cut yourself. Yeah. Get this done. Make it look classy. Here's one thing that's going to help you. These two signs. Oh. Our experts are standing by, ready to help. If you put this sign up in front of one of those cameras, Greg is going to come into this room and he will do your bidding for a full hour. And same as Robin. Same with Robin. Oh, yes, so we only you. get to use that once. Though. One time. You ready to start? You ready for the final exam? One of you people is Canada's worst handyman. We're about to find out who. These people have only worked together without an assigned leader once before. When they shingled the shed in our very first show, they began the job without holding a team meeting, and the result was so chaotic. What's up? We named a foreman for every subsequent group challenge, and things improved. Jeannie learned that important lesson. She and Keith both realize they'll get more done if someone leads. The biggest thing that is the organization. How yeah. are we going to do the plan? We should elect like a foreman. What? We do need a foreman. No, let's, do, let's, just, let's just work as a team all together on everything. Outrageously, Merle wins. To start this 10-hour final exam, Canada's worst handymen scuttle off without a leader and without a coherent plan, doing whatever job they feel is best suited to their personal skills. I think that's disastrous. Yeah. There, yeah. there has to be somebody in charge, a go-to person for something, just so that they can get their jobs figured out, the priorities figured out. Merle runs to the bathroom to work on the sink, even though when he replaced his kitchen sink, he was left with a persistent leak, slowed down by a silly gob of putty. Nothing but a little bit of duct tape on fixed. Keith launches into the wood pile and starts planning the entertainment center, even though he has a disastrous past with woodworking. Andrew! Daryl goes straight for the kitchen cupboards, which means he'll have to hang six doors. The last time Daryl tried wrapping his head around a door job, it left him reeling. And Jeannie and Barry join forces to glue down this hardwood floor. But both these people have failed miserably in each of their three previous flooring challenges. If Canada's worst handymen had any common sense at all, they would start this day by calling in their professional help to learn how they should attack this project. I see them starting from the bottom and working up. You don't want to lay your floor down and then do your drywall and have all your garbage falling on your new floor. Uh, Things fall down. Right away, they're sort of starting backwards. Why these people don't call in the pros is a testament to why they're here. They really are Canada's worst handymen. They're impressively bad. The experts aren't the only people watching today. In this lounge, the five folks who coerced their loved ones into coming here are enjoying the show on live TV. This is way better. This is way better. <laughs> this is good. 
because now we can say what we really want to say and they can't hear us. Now, your, your loved ones will never hear this. Which one of them is Canada's worst enemy? I still have a gut feeling about Daryl. Merle starts the sink job by ripping the old basin off the wall. No, I look like I pissed myself. It also looks like Merle uncovered a nasty hole. Merle tries hanging the new sink on the old bracket. It works, and he hides the hole. But the pedestal is too short. So he stares at the new brackets, looking for answers. Eventually, he looks at the instructions, but only long enough to verify they confuse him. This is Chinese or something. I can't read this. Meanwhile, Keith cuts his first board for the entertainment unit. And then he becomes bored. So he takes his first break of the day by going to the bathroom to visit Merle. Keith reads Merle's instructions, but like his friend, he gets confused and puts them down. Okay, I'll just keep puddling them along here. And... Merle checks the pedestal again. It's still too short. So he lifts it into place and wishes it would magically stay there. Merle takes a measurement. The gap is officially two and a half inches wide. But a solution for filling it is miles away. Think. You know we should count as how many times they do something and then undo it and then do it again. Yes. Merle goes to look at the pedestal on the old sink. It's just a piece of pipe, which he uses to beat the old porcelain. When he returns from the thrashing, Jeannie tells Merle exactly what to do. You've got to lower this sink down about three inches. That's in my mind. Anyway. Two and a half inches, I remember. Mm -hmm. Jeannie! Oh. Just the voice of reason. In the living room, Barry's laying out the hardwood. But like usual, he's not bothering to read the instructions that come with the product. He's using the smallest putty knife yeah. possible to do a whole floor. Can you imagine how long it's going to take him with that little tiny knife? <laughs> oh, it's still don't, don't they need like a big spreader so they can go like this? He should be using a large notched trowel to evenly spread this glue. But he's gobbing it on freehand and kicking the boards into place. His notched trowel is getting used, though. And the way he does his lines with the trowel, that's priceless. In the kitchen, Daryl gets the old cupboards ripped down, and he's starting to get his head into the construction of the new cabinets. Daryl has struggled so much with assembly. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see if he can even put those upper cabinets together to get them on the wall. There's one hour gone. And no projects finished. I still have Daryl as a pick because he still doesn't know how to use a, a, any tools properly. Is Daryl Canada's worst handyman? <laughs> the nation's lousiest renovators have been given 10 hours to complete 11 tasks in this derelict apartment. So far, one and a half hours are gone and no tasks are complete. When time runs out, someone will be named Canada's worst handyman. Barry and Jeannie have started the floor without reading the installation instructions that came with the hardwood or the adhesive. Hardwood flooring is a tongue-in-groove product. The tongue fits snugly into the groove, creating a stable bond on all four sides. Usually these floors are nailed down, but in a concrete building like this, glue is the professional choice. Jeannie and Barry are correctly going in courses or rows. At the end of each course, they're properly cutting the board and using the remaining end as the first piece in the next course. But... They're awful stingy with that glue. <laughs> yeah, why is that? They've got buckets of it. Maybe we're being a little bit liberal with the glue. No, no, the peanut gallery was right. This is nowhere near enough glue. In the kitchen, Daryl is engrossed in his cupboard assembly instructions. And Keith is still cutting wood the most senseless way imaginable. He's made two cuts of a board so far, right? Yeah. yeah. That's all he's done. And even if he gets something built, it'll be in the way. That's right. You don't put the furniture in the room before you build the room. In the bathroom, Merle removes the old sink bracket. He puts the pedestal in place, and he balances the new sink on it. Then Merle carefully measures the wall and screws the new brackets in place. But when he goes to hang the sink, Merle learns he missed his mark. 
the sink is still too high to rest on its pedestal. Slapping it doesn't help. So Merle does the smoking man's version of the thinker. Maybe he'll think to call in the experts. Meanwhile, Daryl is hoping for divine inspiration. Keith is taking his third break, and the farther Jeannie and Barry go, the less glue they use. What do you think they're going to do with you in the hour they got you? They'll get themselves stuck in a situation, and then when they realize they can't continue, then they'll say, oh, Greg, please bail me out. We need Greg now, okay? Fix my screw-up. Yeah. Merle is trying to drill holes in his concrete floor now so he can screw the sink pedestal in place. But he can't find the right drill bit. This one ain't giving me a hole on the floor. It just spins on top. He thinks the drill bit will work if they change the settings on the drill. Oh, you have to uh, switch the thing to uh, the hammer, not the screw, on the bottom of your drill. Oh, no, look what I did. I ruined it. Okay. This is making me look pretty stupid. Now, Merle wants to give up. Barry? Yeah? You think I guys should put tile on the wall first before the sink? Barry happily leaves his floor project to offer Merle advice. I would put the sink on after. That advice means Merle can shift gears and not feel like a quitter. So Merle yeah. has actually taken the sink off the wall now so that he can put the tile up behind it. Again. Again. Yeah. Which so. is, is the right way to do it. When the team breaks for lunch, they haven't finished a single task, and they haven't worked out any sort of rhythm. You can't work out a rhythm. It just has to happen. It's coming. You know what it's I mean? It's coming. It just takes... Just keep going and it'll fall into place kind of thing. If they just call in our pros, Robin and Greg would conduct a rhythm. But the team is agreeing to not seek professional help until the last possible moment. And what I think we should do is pull Greg in about 7.30 and save the bedroom for last. Positive thinking. So far today, Keith has managed to cut three pieces of wood which he glued and screwed together. Now he wants to shift projects. I'm going to work with Daryl on the cabinet. That's news to Daryl. He took an early lunch so he could work alone. I think it's going to be pretty crazy by the end. I think, I don't think they're really thinking in terms of what a 10 hour commitment is to a project. Someone's going to be worse than handyman. And uh, I'm finding these other uh, people are just bringing me down. Hey, Daryl. Yep. How about this for a plan? How about you and I do this together instead of dividing and conquering? But their goal is to conquer. Daryl sends Keith off to find screws. Two and a half inch screws. The ensuing walkabout takes Keith to five apartments, but never to the supply room. He wastes 12 minutes. Oh dear, I'm spending more time on this than anything else. Okay. Oh, that looks good. Daryl, I'm sorry, but I've had no luck. Is there still no check mark anywhere? No check mark inside. <laughs> you guys have been on the go for two hours and 15 minutes, and so far, not a one. This is just tedious. Yeah, but we have a system. We thought we had a system. We're going to look a little bit skewbaldy. If Jeannie and Barry keep going at the sluggish pace they've established, this floor will be a 15-hour job. Why don't they call in the experts? What do you think they'll call you? Do you know what? I think they're going to save me till the end. Because if I go in there and tell them, oh, you're laying the hardwood in the wrong direction, you haven't matched the wallpaper, you haven't done this or that, there's no way that they want to start over on anything. I think they're just going to suck it up. We sort of agreed that Robin would be here at 6.30. Barry is acting as the de facto leader of the group. His decision to hold off on bringing in the experts is causing the team to continue without really understanding what they should be doing, like the kitchen floor. This tiling adhesive takes almost an hour to get tacky. If no one reads the instructions before this evening, the team will be doomed. Daryl seems doomed. He's been struggling with these cupboards for almost three hours. He's even letting Keith help now. But when they try to mount the final cabinet, it's not going to be secure until we get the top one in there. It won't join properly. Daryl screws it up anyway. In the bathroom, Merle's getting his tiling adhesive spread on correctly, and the tiles are going up with ease. Finally, all the nominees for Canada's Worst Handyman are busy at the exact same time. Maybe they finally found their rhythm. Or maybe it's just a fluke. Instead of continuing work, Keith goes off on his eighth break of the day. 
Keith is quite excellent at coming and taking looks at people. Yes. That's great. No, he's now, great he's job. wandering the apartment, explaining Merle's progress to people who aren't interested. He's doing, he's totally fine. He's got like a sink going, got some tiles happening. But Jeannie is not fine. Help! She's bleeding. Look! Oh dear, that's not good. I need, I need a needle. I've got a huge, great sliver. I've got a chunk of wood in here. Oh, look at it. She's freaking out. Oh, she's bleeding. I've got to have water first. If you just relax, I can pull this out. As Robin tries to remove the wood, Merle is relieved. I'm off the hook. The deep gash Merle suffered yesterday no longer constitutes the rehab center's only injury. If Jeannie has to leave after only completing a few bad rows of flooring, her expert evaluation will not go well. Is Jeannie Canada's worst handyman? Welcome back to Canada's worst handyman. For this, our last episode, we are flying in one very intimidating piece of hardware. Our infamous tool shed is landing on the roof. When our students' final exam is done, one of them will be led inside that monstrosity to hear the words that no sawdust maker wants to hear. You are Canada's worst handyman. With three and a half hours gone in the final exam, not one of the 11 tasks are complete. Jeannie's not even working. She's in the first aid room, parting ways with a giant splinter. If she can't finish the final exam, she'll undoubtedly be named the worst. Voila! I'm all right, I'm all right. I just won't do what I did, which was a very silly thing. There's going to be a gap in your floor now. Look, Ooh, there's blood on the wood. I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> in the kitchen, Daryl gets some shelves in the cupboards while Keith tries to imagine hanging the doors. Unable to figure it out, Keith wanders off. Daryl and doors don't get along. So he gives up to tackle the glass block window. While balancing these materials, Daryl must be thinking about how well this task went the last time he tried it. Boy, that really sucks. Unable to visualize a plan, Daryl gives up on the glass blocks and returns to stressing over the cupboards. You know what? Don't get angry at it. I'm not getting, I'm not getting angry at it. The hinges Daryl can't understand should be a bad handyman's best friend. If you hang the doors askew, these adjustable hinges can still be raised or lowered, allowing the doors to close properly. Daryl and Keith get two doors up, but when they swing shut, the edges bang together. Fixing it involves adjusting the screws on the hinge. That doesn't happen. We'll come back to that one. Meanwhile, in the bathroom, Merle has switched back to plumbing, even though the tiling isn't finished. He hangs the new sink, and it droops, causing the wall to flex. <laughs> There's no support here. That's why it's coming down. It's going inside this hole. No, it's coming down because it's not resting on its pedestal. I don't think it's going to go down. In the living room, the floor is going down with seams placed too close together. And it's still taking three times longer than it should. Um, uh -oh. Andrew's we, going to light a fire. I wrote a plan on the wall that included finishing 11 projects. You've been in there for four hours. You haven't got one thing done. <laughs> Go! Finish! Please! Please! In the bathroom, Merle makes an unnecessary patch, which he screws in place. Then Merle puts the pedestal in place, but he realizes he's going to need someone else to handle his pipes. So Keith assumes the position. Oh, this got me kicked out of Thailand once. The time is half gone, nothing's finished, and Jeannie thinks they're right on track. We're halfway through, all 11. That's irrelevant right now. You are not. You've got an untouched room. You're halfway no, through we're one halfway pass. halfway through. Everybody's halfway through. Don't they want to check something off to say, look, we've finished? No, I guess not. There's been no work done on the glass blocks, the kitchen tiles, the ceiling of gyp rock, or the wallpaper. But if the bad handyman summon the experts soon, this renovation can still be salvaged. Keith and Daryl have switched jobs. Now they're working on the rickety entertainment center Keith began this morning. This wobbly stand has the same structural integrity as the chair Keith made in episode three. 
Instead of starting fresh, the guys build onto the flimsy unit, creating a wooden house of cards. Measure twice, cut once. It's unstable. It's impractical. But it's done. Don't, don't break it now. Let's get moving. Yes! <laughs> In the bathroom, Merle hooks up the water lines. Oh, look it. It's the sink. It works, and it doesn't leak. Merle finishes all the easy tiling, but he won't even attempt the difficult areas, which means all of Merle's tiling is pointless. Starting with this untreated patch, Merle's wall is sure to rot. I put a lot of sweat into my work, and I tried. I honestly think Merle is the least improved. Is Merle Canada's worst handyman? Measure twice, cut once. The final 10-hour exam to decide who is Canada's worst handyman is more than half finished. But the jobs we asked the nominees to do are not. He's having a smoke now. As Keith takes his 15th break, oh my. Merle starts on a window frame, while Barry and Jeannie continue flooring with sloth-like intensity. They're still doing the floor? Yes. <laughs> yes, I know. Oh, boy. In the kitchen, Daryl is trying to hang the cupboard doors for the fourth time. He really should move on. It's just not getting any better. He really hasn't improved. When Keith returns, he wants to buddy up with Daryl again. But Daryl has a different idea. I don't know. Maybe they want you to do the wallpaper or something in there. Okay. I need a project, so I, maybe I'm going to start to do this. What's that? Okay. Wallpaper the bedroom. It's a bad idea. The last time Keith wallpapered, he didn't start in the corner, he hung it upside down, and he overlapped the seams. Yeah, it's all clear. So why is he going to do the wallpaper now? It's beautiful. But the real question is, why are they putting wallpaper in a room that doesn't have a ceiling yet? It needs to be drywalled. Right. And the edges all around the outside perimeter need to be taped gotcha. and filled. Right. So he's just putting up a clean right. surface that he's going to make a mess on. Yeah. We taught Keith to always start wallpapering in a discreet corner. So you started properly in a corner, did you, Keith? Yes. I've run into a snag, though. That's a corner, isn't it? No, that's the middle of a wall. You think that's the corner of the room? You're right. Oh. All right. OK, it's like not a corner. But it's, anyway. Anyway, 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 I'm moving on. There's six hours gone, and only three tasks complete. Did I tell you our plan or no? Please tell me your plan. Oh, so we're going to, we're going to, at the very last hour-ish. Yeah. We're, that's where we're going to call um, Gregory to come in. It's just stop, stop. Call him the professional. Instead, Keith goes outside for his 17th break. He's gambling with time now. The wallpaper's really coming along, hey? This is really high on your priority list. No, we have a wager now. It's, a, it's in the union break, too. What's the wager? It's... <laughs> What's the wager? Ten dollars if I finish the room. Oh, come here, Rob. Come here. <laughs> this is our lighting guy, Rob. <laughs> and if he don't... Are you gambling with them now? Ten bucks says what? That they don't get this room wallpapered? No way. No and are you me. taking that bet? Yeah, we shook on it. Yeah. Like a... I want in. You'll take another ten dollar bet? Yeah. That's twenty bucks now. Twenty bucks, buddy. That's uh, okay. Thanks. We can do it. Oh yeah, I'm in for ten bucks. <laughs> When he returns, instead of lining up his second piece of wallpaper next to his first and matching the pattern, Keith decides he'd better move on to the corner where he was supposed to start. He doesn't cut the third piece to go around the doorframe, and he doesn't line up the seams. This wooden strapping is on the ceiling, so the jip rock can be screwed in place. Keith thinks the strapping is an obstacle, and he tries to take it down. Luckily, it's a tiring task, so he gives up in less than a minute. <laughs> oh, Keith, you're an idiot. While putting up his fourth piece of wallpaper, Keith becomes so baffled by the strapping, he works around it. Robin can't believe her eyes, so I go in to see if Keith is having his on. I'm going to, I'm trying something you here. You have to be kidding. No, I'm not. You have to be. You have to be kidding. You have to be kidding me. No. I, mean, I, I actually thought of this. I want to make a pattern. I'm wondering if it would work or not. 
like with all these. You've been provided with a pattern. Here it is. No, Here I it know, is. but this hideous gap, not part of the pattern, Keith. I tried to take this out, but it wouldn't come out, so I can get behind it. Your ceiling is going to be here. This is the drywall strapping, right? You're going to have ceiling there, man. Oh, I never even thought of that. Actually, the ceiling will be a little bit, like, an inch lower or whatever. Damn. All right. Well, I'm going to just press on. We've been over this before. Pressing on means taking that down. This one? Absolutely. Well, this one's easy to take down. Do it right, man. Do it right. In the supply room, Merle precisely measures lumber to make a frame for the glass block window. If he's off by even a fraction of a centimeter, he'll have difficulty installing it. What the f We cut the window opening so it would perfectly accept rows of five glass blocks. Why is Merle now shrinking it with two by fours? But you know what, they, there's some in our hotel room. The mortar is that thick though in between them. I swear it's that thick. Barry's right. The spacers adjust wide enough to allow that much mortar. So Merle heads off to mix up a batch while Daryl and Keith stand around watching. It's almost got to feel like um, gravel or something. Gravel. Merle's mortar is the perfect consistency and the proper thickness. But when Daryl drops the blocks in, he displaces the mortar underneath, throwing the entire plan out of alignment. And that's not even the big mistake. Merle's, Merle's finger. finger. Yeah. Merle's finger. It's not just a measuring device, now it's a trowel, too. You gotta be a little bit more neater than this, man. You're going too fast. The blocks are going up messy and on an angle. Boy, we're looking like kindergarten kids playing with putty here. This glass block window is Merle's task. But when it becomes a disaster, he shirks all responsibility and starts a new job. Oh, Merle, no, be careful. We're expecting Keith to be deeply involved in the Jip Rock Challenge. In fact, we chose it because he said... I want to put up a piece of sheetrock, I believe it's called, and then there's that tape that goes in between the cracks of the sheetrock, and I want to put whatever you're supposed to put over it, white stuff. Now, on his 21st break, Keith admits his sheetrock ambition has crumbled. I'm just going to go back to being a sweeper. I'm not going to actually go back to be like a journeyman handyman. Yep, right here is where we had our problem. Mercifully, Barry and Jeannie reach the final stage of their hardwood floor job. This one would not go in. Okay. And it's hard to throw the whole thing off. To reach the wall, Barry and Jeannie need boards narrower than the ones they have. Instead of tediously sawing the final pieces, though, they decide to call their floor complete just centimeters away from the finish line. Ah. Oh. There's just three hours left and seven jobs still remaining. Finally, the confused carpenters show a sliver of common sense by asking for professional help. Keith would hold the sign, but he's taking a break. Is Keith Canada's worst handyman? There's two and a half hours left in the final exam to determine Canada's worst handyman, and seven of the tasks remain undone. When the renovators finally cash in on their right to have our design expert for an hour, Robin goes straight to the wallpaper. I suggest taking it down and putting the ceiling in first. But doing that work doesn't make sense to these people. So shall we pretend that we've got the ceiling in? And no, we shall not pretend we have the ceiling in. We shall deal with the wallpaper. It's got to come down. And that's better come down while it's still wet, right? Yep. Otherwise it's gonna once, it's, once it's dry, you'll never get it off. But instead of taking the wallpaper off, the handyman follow Robin to the kitchen, where she explains the urgency of the tiling project. Now, I don't know if you guys read the glue, but it actually has to take time to set up. To get this job done before deadline, Robin tells Jeannie and Barry to spread the adhesive from the far end of the room all the way to the door. Wait 45 minutes, then lay the tiles from the door to the far end, finishing with the edge pieces. Jeannie and Barry don't like that logical plan. They want to spread the adhesive around the perimeter of the room and somehow work their way to the middle. Wouldn't be what I recommend, but I'm only here for the expert advice. After eight long hours, Canada's worst handyman finally summon our head builder. Greg arrives, disheartened. There's just not enough time left to possibly salvage this project, but he can get the ceiling done. So there's two hours left. So there's, two hours left. There's no reason this shouldn't happen. There's no reason the drywall can't get up and taped. 
So, Greg gets to work. How come these walls are so goofy? I think, huh? I don't know. When Greg gets de-glued, he shows Merle how to use what drywallers call a dead man. There we are. How are we on the Greg gets the team on the right track. You can uh, drill it there and drill it there. Then leaves. Merle does the drilling while Keith strolls off to have his 24th break of the day. In the kitchen, Barry and Jeannie spread the slow-drying adhesive around the perimeter of the floor while Daryl works on the cupboards. Then Barry boxes them all in. Oh, my God. He's painting himself oh, in the corner. Oh, they're starting at the door right oh. now. Yay! <laughs> yes. Oh, Barry, Barry, we love Barry, you. Barry. With only one hour remaining, seven tasks are still incomplete. Oh, my God, that's so great. Even though the glue isn't tacky yet, Barry starts laying tiles. Wow, this floor is going down clean. There's got to be, there is something that takes this off because I can feel it starting to come off with a bit of water. So it's, I don't think it's a big problem. It is a big problem. Cleaning this many dirty tiles will take hours. Plus, there's adhesive on the cupboards and the new hardwood floor. Right that way. With Merle cracking the whip on Keith, the Jip Rock gets fully installed with 40 minutes to spare. Here, you can have the on. owner. Are you sure? Wherever. Easily enough time to do the first coat of plaster. But when Merle goes out for a smoke, he declares himself finished. Everything done in there, Merle? Yeah. Yeah? Well, not everything, but what I'm going to do anyway. What do you mean what you're going to do? I had enough. I'm done. You're not worried that quitting early might make you Canada's worst handyman? That would be another kick in the butt if that happened, considering how much work I did. And I know you're not going to believe this, but Keith is also taking a break. Keith? Yes, sir. I'm just curious if everything's done. No, we have well, to. there's half an hour left. Get your ass back in there. I thought... There's half an hour left, man. Oh. Get in there. Okay, I'm going What are you I'm, doing? I'm going to do the wallpaper next. Why are you sitting next? here talking to me? Get in there. I was talking to Shell. Get in there. I'm going to... I'm get going in to, there. I'm going to. I'm going there's to. There's half an hour left. Okay. Keith, get in there. I'm following you. Okay. Get in there. Keith goes in to do the wallpaper, but as soon as he's inside, he takes a break and gives up. And the wallpaper? Not gonna happen, probably. But you got ten bucks for me? I'm gonna give it to you tomorrow. Excellent. Merle's guilty conscience leads him back. He recruits Keith, and together they spread plaster with their hands. With time running out, Daryl rushes to get handles on the cupboard doors. In his haste, he gets them a little crooked. Daryl, it took what eight hours to do cupboards, cupboard doors, eight hours. So, who is Canada's worst handyman? Keith or Daryl? Daryl just can't think his way through anything, and Keith just flips around and doesn't do anything. I'd have to say Daryl or Jeannie. They're the ones who are just can't seem to get the end from the beginning. Barry doesn't seem any further ahead. He's still not reading instructions. He's still, you know, cart before the horse. He's not. He's not getting it. Merle's not getting it either. Maybe Merle just yeah. needs to slow down a little bit. The day started with unorganized chaos. It's ending the same way. And that's the final exam! The nominees for Canada's worst handyman go home for some well-deserved rest. The following afternoon, when the dust has settled and the glue has dried, I take the experts on a tour of the job site. What's going on there? I'm not enough glue. Barry and Jeannie didn't offset their seams either. This is much weaker now. Mm -hmm. And they didn't protect the floor from damage. Merle and Daryl's glass blocks went up at an angle. There's thick mortar, thin mortar, and holes so big you can poke right through. Keith and Daryl's entertainment center isn't any better. Once again, it's Keith sort of doing some half-assed job and then talking his way around it. Daryl blundered for hours trying to understand these cupboard door hinges. They didn't even join the cabinets together. There's no way the doors were going to align. Jeannie and Barry's filthy undone kitchen floor tiles don't deserve a professional evaluation. Neither does Keith's wallpaper. Merle's chip rock is up, but it rattles. And the plaster job? So they've got three or four inches here that the ceiling stops short of the wall. You can't even tape that. 
This thirsty patch of untreated plywood right next to the sink means that even with a good grout job, Merle's tightly tiled wall is sure to rot. Which brings us to the running water. Indoor plumbing is what sets us apart from the animals, and Merle installed the sink correctly. According to Canada's worst handyman, they managed to achieve eight of the 11 tasks. According to our experts, they actually only accomplished one. Well, we've reached the end of our sixth and final episode here at the Handyman Rehabilitation Center, which means it's time for us to nail the country's most pathetic amateur builder. During your stay here, each one of you has made vast improvements as a home renovator. But, collectively, you are all still awful. Barry, I'm afraid that what you did to those two floors during your final exam, well, the work wasn't even worthy of being walked on. Your craftsmanship is atrocious, but you're not Canada's worst handyman. You're free to go. I have failed at everything I've done, and I have learned, and that's how you learn, by failing. Jeannie, during your final exam, you pulled a splinter out of your finger that was the size of a piece of lumber, but you didn't let that stop you. You're not good enough to work in anyone else's home, but what you do within your own four walls is your own business. You are not Canada's worst handyman. <laughs> You're free to go. Good luck, guys. Good luck. I didn't come to win or lose. I came to learn. Daryl, you showed up here wearing a very sharp pair of carpenter's overalls, but your carpentry skills were about as sharp as a fence post. I'm afraid you're still in the running to be Canada's worst handyman. Please meet me on the roof. Keith, yes. your hand is not designed for plastering. And your mind is not designed for hanging wallpaper. You got the 10 bucks you owe me your Yes, I do. Do you? Give it to me. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I'm afraid to say, though, you're still in the running to be Canada's worst handyman. Please meet me on the roof. Merle, you arrived here addicted to duct tape and procrastination. But now, I hope you've kicked the addiction and you have enough work skills to actually finish your daughter's bedroom. Okay? We know you're not Canada's worst handyman. <laughs> I will try harder and safety first. We've kept Daryl and Keith in suspense long enough. When we come back, we'll know which one of them is Canada's worst handyman. Auction Kings. Tonight. I'm excited. It's not the stairs to the gallows, but it's close. Keith and Daryl climb onto the roof of the rehab center to learn which of them is Canada's worst handyman. Daryl? Keith? Yes, sir. Both of you arrived here at the Handyman Rehabilitation Center completely unable to build anything. Keith, you weren't handy because you'd never bothered to play with tools. And Daryl, you weren't handy because you'd never been allowed to play with tools. During your time here at the Rehab Center, we gave you tons of lessons, some of which you absorbed, but some of which rolled off your back like blood off of Merle's duct tape chair. Keith, in the final exam, you made the biggest mess, but Daryl, you made the single biggest blunder. It wasn't easy, but our experts have come to a clear-cut decision. It's now my duty to inform you that Canada's worst handyman is... <laughs> Daryl, you're free to go. Oh. Months ago, or whenever this whole process started, this wasn't, I never would have, this was never supposed to happen. I'm totally elated, I'm totally elated. I really wanted to learn these things. No matter how hard we tried. Keith, what we need you to do, I need you to focus. We couldn't teach Keith to focus. I'm gonna try to stay as focused as possible and not let like little things kind of throw me off. But in the final exam, Keith took 34 breaks. Positive thinking. He switched projects 14 times, and he accomplished nothing correctly. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Canada's worst handyman. The most important thing to me is that I did learn things about handyman stuff and about safety and about tools and about construction and renovation and all that kind of stuff. Like that is, is um, I think, a big bonus f for me. In our next special episode of Canada's Worst Handyman, we'll look back at the lessons learned in our rehab center. I don't recall duct tape being involved in the lesson. Well, turn it off now, now. Then we'll knock it to the ground.